Welcome back to the show, everyone. This is day 52 of the Sims 4 Socialism Challenge. We've had patch day, which won't affect anything that we are doing here. One of the things, the main thing they added was pools, which is pretty cool. I'm sure a lot of you would like to see Rosa in a bikini. I sure would, but uh, I'm not going to bother with a pool because we're very late in the challenge and it doesn't matter. And maybe the next time I play The Sims 4 um, after the socialism challenge for you guys, we'll work with some pools. And in the last episode, or should I say two episodes ago... We had this interesting situation occur with David as we found out that he has a an available promotion. Well, I decided to do some research, and it turns out that if you are on the evil path of Secret Agent, there are 11 levels to the career track. Now, as far as the achievement is concerned, you only need 10. But for the rules of the Socialism Challenge, we have to get David up to level 11. I do apologize for not knowing that in advance. Obviously, I did write the IGN Entertainment Strategy Guide. However, I did not explore every single path that is possible because if I did that, the guide would still not be done, I would still not be paid, and I would be a much poorer man sitting before you today. But, uh, you know, it happens, and it was a fun little surprise. I don't know if Lena intentionally knew that, and that's why she suggested I take the secret agent path, and this was all an evil plan on her part. I wouldn't put it past her. She's very mischievous that way. Too bad she couldn't teach my Sims how to be mischievous, so we didn't waste frickin' days at a time dealing with that mischief skill. But anyway, like I said, I do apologize, but <laughs> what do you expect from this channel and my Let's Plays? Competency? <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, so the only three Sims we have to worry about are Rosa, David, and uh, Angel, who um, David is at level 10, needs to get to 11, whereas Angel and Rosa are both at 9 and need to get to 10. Everybody else is in very good shape. So Rosa is up first. We're going to get her... Oh, good, we have no food in the place. Debbie, guess what you get to do today? That's right. All right, cook. And I want her gourmet to be... Wait, is it? We maxed it out, right? It's been a while since I played. Yes, we maxed that. Okay. Um, tell you what. Make some garlic noodles. And I wish I could... Well, I can. What am I talking about? Whatever. Go for it, Debbie. All right. Meanwhile, uh, what is Angel up to other than sleeping? It has been a while. Oh, Angel's going to get promoted. Probably she's going to get promoted today, in fact, especially if I can get her to work inspired, which I can't. It looks like we have a broken stereo and a broken shower. We'll get one of the... Hey, Logan can do it. I'm sure he won't die. So we're going to have Logan repair what needs to be repaired while Debbie keeps cooking. And meanwhile, we're going to have Rosa eat, and then she works in three days, which should give us plenty of time to get that fitness skill up to eight and hopefully collect our third space rock, and then she'll be good to go. And then David, all he needs is... Okay, he's the tough one. He has... He needs two more points of mischief, which sucks, and he needs one point of programming, which is going to be a lot easier to deal with. He just made himself some food and then walked away. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to have him work on his programming here. And meanwhile, uh, the other Sims, the other five Sims, not counting, um, I guess, the other four Sims, basically get to do whatever they want. Uh, so we should be in good shape. Why don't you cook some... Ooh, grilled cheese. So I actually ate today before I started doing this broadcast, recording, whatever you want to call it. It's not a broadcast. Broadcast is only on streaming Sundays. But um, I did uh, I, I did eat, and I have a drink here. So hopefully not only does my voice sound normal, but I shouldn't constantly be complaining about how I'm hungry. Uh, when I started my job at Walmart, the very first department I worked for was the deli. And that was the worst part to be in whenever you got hungry for lunch because you, or at least for me, I remember the one time I was, uh, my task for the day was cooking um, on the hot foods and I had put in some macaroni and cheese and some chicken and they finished cooking at the exact same moment, like two minutes before I had to go to lunch. And I bought probably $15 worth of food and ate like $1 worth of it, but holy crap. The hit, having the smells hit me in at the same time in the same place, I was done. I needed food. 
And even now when I'm checking people out, when I get to play cashier, and people come through with good-sounding food or good-looking food, I have trouble dealing with it. Uh, there was, um, like, the one is, especially when people bring in, like, frozen spicy thing, or not spicy, but, like, seasoned things like Arby's fries, that kind of thing, and they bring it through, and I just remember the taste of it, and I, I just need fries. But that's neither here or there. I did good. I, I've done good. I've actually prepared for the broadcast, even did a little research on the whole secret agent thing. Pretty amazing. It's not something that happens every day. Or ever, really. Thank you, Logan. Didn't I order you to... No, that was David. Okay. So, David only needs to hit one level of programming, and then he'll be in good shape. I'm not overly concerned about his job performance meter because it's so far low, and it's going to take him forever to hit Mischief 10, so we're not super concerned about him. Um, are you looking at their butts, Kichiro? That's, that's rude, man. That's rude. All right, so Debbie here is, let's see, I think that's four meals now? Yes, that's four meals. Uh, we'll make it a nice round number of five, and then we're going to uh, we're gonna let her do whatever she wants. Um, that is after she pees. And uh, what do you guys feel like having? Taco casserole? Good choice. All right. So yeah, I do have plans for more Sims 4 after the Sims 4 Socialism Challenge is completed. Um, I have given it some thought. I basically know what I want to do because I will be playing with one house rule, which will make the series a fun little thing to watch instead of just playing it completely vanilla. But um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, it because it'll be open-ended. Like, I won't have a goal. Uh, I won't have a long-term goal. So... I don't know. I don't know if you guys will be interested, um, but it will be one of those ongoing series where I'll just play it one day out of a week or something, and um, that way I won't feel the pressure to get the episodes done, and I won't feel the, the need to do something every day, and if it just doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, whatever. Um, oh, hey. Uh, job opening. There's an opening for an opinion columnist on Angel's site. Readership has fallen, so she needs to make sure to hire someone who will bring numbers up. Should she hire a hot young writer who has big political opinions, or hire an experienced moderate? Hmm. How about an experienced moderate? Uh-oh. Angel forgot that sensible journalism is the worst way to get traffic. <laughs> Isn't that sad? The moderate is bland, so readers are looking elsewhere to reinforce the opinions they already have. And that is sadder. Confirmation bias, baby. All right, I am going to have you work hard, and that should, even though you had a performance loss of small, that should get you over the hump and get you promoted, and then we can celebrate the fact that we'll only have two Sims to get to level 10. But one thing at a time, hopefully that does wind up being true. All right, so Rose is doing well. I'm just going to have her work out all day. She's going to get very stinky, um, but who cares? And, uh... She's already, like, super thin. I think she's probably the thinnest sim we've still got. Except maybe David, who actually does work out. The others don't. Although, Angel tries. She's a, she is an active sim, but we keep having her do other things, so. Okay, yes, yes, I know you're sore. Go go to the, yeah, and then energized heavy load. There we go. All right. Okay, Debbie... You're done cooking, and that's it. So the only person we care about right now is Rosa, since David has a sustained action he's dealing with. And, uh-oh. Uh-oh, she's washing her hands. Look at that. Look at that. The sink has that auto soap dispenser, and it got her hygiene up by, like, one-third from empty. That's amazing. I have seriously underestimated how good those upgraded objects are. Oh, uh, I did forget to mention, one of the things that the patch did do is it screwed something up with task switching, so this might get really annoying for me between episodes. Of course, you guys won't notice, but I will notice, and I'm going to get more exponentially agitated as the day goes on. But hopefully we don't have too many more episodes left, and my agitation will be somewhat uh, mitigated. When we do have... When we do complete the... Ch huh. The bathrooms are a little different. Anyway, um, not by object, but like, I'll show you what I mean. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not yet, not yet, not yet, Rosa. Keep, 
keep pushing the limits. I know you're tired. Your arms are going to fall off. Um, I didn't realize I did that. So the bathroom doors, like, the bathrooms, normally I would make them uh, mirrors of each other instead of rotated. So on these two bathrooms, the door's in front of the toilet. And on these two doors, or bathrooms, the door's in front of the sink. Oops. Oh, well, whatever. Um, as I have stated many times before, my houses, uh, tend to be very symmetrical and tend to work very well, but they look ugly as crap. Um, I don't know. I've always been a fun uh, function over form kind of guy in everything I do in life. Although that has gotten me into trouble more than once. All right, come on, Rosa. You're very close. Pump that iron. Push that metal. Lift those things. Exercise talk. You, you got it. You've almost got it. Come on. Thank you. Okay, now you can take a break. And that means Angel has been promoted. She is now a scribe of history. And okay, I didn't drop my pen, but I did lose my pen. Where's my pen? Oh. Ah, crap. This is the problem with... Oh, it's right beside my mouse. Okay. Angel has been promoted. She is now level 50. Or, she's level 10. On day 52. Angel is done. Unless well, she has a surprise, too. Let's take a look at her job here. Angel has transcended day-to-day -day news and now spends her time looking backward, studying what has been and what it all means. Future generations will study her works and many more will use them as very fancy doorstops. Ugh. That's what's going to happen with my book. At best. Okay. So Rosa has... Is... What are you doing? Oh, that's fine. Go for it. Okay, so like I said, Angel is done, which is awesome. Debbie, please repair that radio. Thank you. And uh, we are down to just two Sims, David and Rosa. And hello, David. David's heard every sob story in the book, but the guy he's questioning now has a sick dog. Plus, he makes oatmeal for his grandma every Thursday night. He promises he'll never do anything wrong ever, ever again if David just releases him. Should he let him go or show no mercy? Show no mercy! David laughs his best ma maniacal laughter and gleefully tells the informant that he's headed for a tour of Prison Island, where inmates are hunted for sport before being forced to watch really bad reality TV. Isn't... Isn't that redundant? Bad reality TV? Eh, whatever. No performance change. That's fine. Um, it is what it is. Okay, and Rosa, back to you. You are tense. Okay. Uh, have... Wait, don't use the computer. Use the TV, because holy crap does the TV... ...wind up fixing a lot of your fun. Whatever, Joseph. Debbie doesn't care about you. All right, so, oops. So, yes, okay, so we do not have to worry about um, uh, Angel anymore. Does anyone else? Uh, it was Jay in the comments who gave us an over-under of 51 days, but that was before he saw um, the level 11 that David had. Does anyone else want to give an over-under? I mean, he would have been over anyway compared to 51 since Rose is not even done yet, but... That's a that's a question for you guys. What what do you think the over under is for when we are going to be complete with the challenge? All right. So Rosa needs a snack, and then she will pee. Whoa. Uh oh. Sorry, Rosa. Uh, triple speed there, my dear. Come on. Come on. I want to get one space mission in before she goes to bed. Oh, now she does it. She, okay, I see. You have to have it your own idea. Meanwhile, David is back. P, TV, in that order, plays, and then we'll have him start doing some mischievous interactions. Although, I've had about four requests about doing the book thing with him. Or just in general, just getting books for... Um, uh, uh, for words. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I've had a few requests to get for me to make people read books for their skills. And I'm about tempted to do that, although I still think 
Zero G workout. I wish I had known that existed. Um, I still think it'll be slower if he reads about mischief than if he just freaking does the thing. But I have a better way to do it. Um, I just need someone to get all up in his grill. Rattle, rattle, crash! Rosa is on the way back from the Comet ESON flea market when she hears banging inside her rocket ship's cargo hold. She thinks back through recent salvage efforts. Nothing living, certainly. Should Rosa call out or try to take whatever it is by surprise? Do it by surprise. Set phasers to kill. Rosa slowly opens the door and peers inside. Just then, something soft and squishy thumps onto her back and a tentacle threads around her neck. Don't move, a small voice whispers. Everything goes black. Rosa faints, which is technically moving. What? Rosa faints, which is technically moving. I... I don't know what that means. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. I, that took me a minute. Ouch. Rosa's head hurts. And when she tries to move, she realizes that she's handcuffed to her pilot's seat. A sharp, cold object is poking her back. T -t Take me home, a voice stammers. It's oddly deep, and Rosa realizes it's a juvenile voice trying to sound older. Does she comply, or try to reason with the juvenile? Eh, reason with him. <laughs> Alright, David, I need you to grab a bite to eat. Please, thank you. So much better. Free of handcuffs, Rosa sizes up the creature she'd brought. She'd bought as taxidermy. It's just a stupid juvenile that was dared by its brother to pretend. Now it wants a joyride around the galaxy in a free left home. Rosa knows she could get charged with alien napping, but she did promise. Okay, that's kind of strange. Angel, please. Oh, uh, you have plans. Okay, Kichiro, you empty the fridge of crappy food. Go for it, buddy. Yeehaw! Nothing like a wide-eyed kid to make Rosa feel like a hero. Kicking her ship into hyperwarp, she blasts loops around planet Tumutu until suddenly lights appear in the distance. Space cops! Rosa could just pull over and try to explain or try to outrun them. Well, we're already in enough trouble, so let's try to outrun them. Rosa will be fine, I'm sure. Uh, okay. What a day! Why slow down now? Fully engaging her thrusters, Rosa easily ditches the patrol. Four Eyes is over the literal moon with excitement, but Rosa knows it's time to take her friend home. She even receives a nice reward from its mom as thanks. What a crazy flea market day. Now hopefully that reward includes a space rock and then we'll be good to go. And I'm gonna... I'm not gonna call the episode until she gets home because I want to know if it's a bloody space rock. Uh, does not look like it. And no, she still only has two space rocks. Well, balls. Well, in tomorrow's episode, we're going to go back into space and hopefully get ourselves another space rock. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you tomorrow for another one.